She had driven him downtown in the old Plymouth, and while she was at the doctor's seeing about her arthritis, Ignatius had bought some sheet music at Wehrlein's for his trumpet, and a new string for his lute. Then he had wandered into the Penny Arcade on Royal Street to see whether any new games had been installed. He had been disappointed to find the miniature mechanical baseball game gone. Perhaps it was only being repaired. The last time that he had played it, the batter would not work at all, and after some argument, the manager had returned his nickel. Even though the Penny Arcade people had been base enough to suggest that Ignatius himself had broken the baseball machine by kicking it. Concentrating upon the fate of the miniature baseball machine, Ignatius detached his being from the physical realities of Canal Street and the people around him and therefore did not notice the two eyes that were hungrily watching him from behind one of D.H. Holmes' pillars, two sad eyes shining with hope and desire. Was it possible to repair the machine in New Orleans? Probably so. However, it might have to be sent to some place like Milwaukee or Chicago, or some other city whose name Ignatius associated with efficient repair shops and permanently smoking factories. Ignatius hoped that the baseball game was being carefully handled in shipment, and that none of its little players was being chipped or maimed by brutal railroad employees determined to ruin the railroad forever with damage claims from shippers, railroad employees who would subsequently go on strike and destroy the Illinois Central. As Ignatius was considering the delight which the little baseball game afforded humanity, the two sad and covetous eyes moved toward him through the crowd like torpedoes zeroing in on a great woolly tanker. The policeman plucked at Ignatius' bag of sheet music. You got any identification, mister? The policeman asked in a voice that hoped that Ignatius was officially unidentified. What? Ignatius looked down upon the badge on the blue cap. Who are you? Let me see your driver's license. I don't drive. Will you kindly go away? I am waiting for my mother. What's that hanging out of your bag? What do you think it is, stupid? It's a string for my lute. What's that? The policeman drew back a little. Are you local? Is it the part of the police department to harass me? when the city is a flagrant vice capital of the civilized world. Ignatius bellowed over the crowd in front of the store. This city is famous for its gamblers, prostitutes, exhibitionists, antichrists, alcoholics, sodomites, drug addicts, fetishists, onanists, pornographers, frauds, jades, litterbugs, and lesbians, all of whom are only too well protected by graft. If you have a moment, I shall endeavor to discuss the crime problem with you, but don't make the mistake of bothering me. And that is from Confederacy of Gunses, Chapter 1.